Think about yourself walking through to the culture in which you walk right now. How many influences are you receiving that you won't even notice it unless somebody points it out to you? Think about where you get your influences from. So we're talking about having a character or a personality. And there are only two ways to remain pure, or to be pure. One is to remain pure, to, be, to remain uninfluenced, to be in the water and never have any pee at all. The second way of being purified is to purge the influence. In other words, as soon as you recognize that it's in you and that it's having an effect, then you can, you know, you have to figure out a way to, to purge it. That can go back to childhood trauma. At what point can you look back on your early childhood trauma and realize, I got peed on a lot when I was a kid. I'm going to wash this off. Um, but you have to first off recognize that it's even happening. And you have to recognize that, that it can be fixed. And first off, recognize that you're even being influenced. Because, I mean, we walk through the world and what do we think we can listen to and not be influenced by? I'd love to see your playlist. I'd love to see what, what words are being used on there. Such that, bless you, such that we have these, these pearl-clutching virgin ears. I can't hear, you know, these words. And by the way, those are just words. I'd like to hear what ideas you're encountering in a day, in a day to day. And if you really start to think about how much influence you're receiving, you're going to realize that there are a lot of people around you peeing in this pool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm thinking of another way, of course, that uh, in order to, you have to be an absolute sea, an absolute sea of virtue, in order to receive even a, a little bit of a polluted stream and to remain unpolluted. Well, so let's say, for example, um, we're sitting in a bathtub together. Don't think about it. It's, it's only weird if you think about it. <laughs> and then I look at you. And I say, Whoa. guess what? <laughs> Just yes, you thought about it. <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> a weirdo, man. <laughs> and then I look at you and I say, guess what? And I, what? I go, I just peed. <laughs> What's your natural reaction? Jump out of the Jump out of the Which you should have in the first place. Jump out of the bathtub. <laughs> as soon as you realize that's where you were. Now let's say that we're in a, in a pool together. And I say, guess what? Oh, I know that looks, Gallon. You peed again, didn't you? I peed again. And when, now you probably swim away a little bit. You're like, oh, that's gross. You, you swim away a little bit. Now let's say that we're standing in the ocean together. And I tell you, hey, guess what? You peed again, didn't you? I peed again. <laughs> you just probably sit there and just go, that's gross, man. You follow? Yeah. Like, how big of a body of water do you have to be in with somebody when they pee before you get disgusted by it? You're never really okay with it. I mean, you could... You could be like in Hawaii, and I could, I could text you and go, Hey, I'm, I'm, are, you, are you staying in the ocean? Yeah, me too. Guess what? Dot, dot, dot. You peed again. <laughs> and then it would, you would still be like, Ugh, that's gross. Even though we're going to be a, you know, separated by 1,000 miles of ocean, 2,000 miles of ocean, whatever it is. But if you're in the bathtub, you're going to freak out and jump out of there because you're going to realize that there's a, there's a real danger of being polluted or getting, your, you know, getting pee on you. But when we're in a, a pool, less so. When we're in ocean, even less so. And then we're separated by, say, 1,000 or 2,000 miles of ocean, even less so. But it never really goes away. Do you follow? Now think about the water as being your character or your personality. And then think about the, the P being influences, negative influences. And so I guess I ask you, how, how big of a, of a personality, how big of a, of a virtue do you have to have? How big is that, that body of water of your personality before you're polluted and you become in, in polluted yourself? And of course now, if let's say you pee in the bathtub and you take that bathtub water and you give it to somebody else, of course now they're going to be polluted by it. And less so if you grab ocean water, there'll be less of it in there. In other words, you start to dish out your personality into the world. And so... How big does your personality, how big does your virtue have to be before you're okay with taking in negative influences? Now, the strange thing is that, let's say that we're sitting in the, uh, the bathtub, and I tell you I just peed, I go, that's gross. <clears throat> and I, I look at I go, well, did you guys notice that David peed too? What the hell is he doing in the bathtub with us? <laughs> Again, don't think about it, <laughs> just, just accept this. Yeah, and now, you know, Michael's in there too. And I'm like, what? Why are we all in here together? No, I got a better question. Why are we peeing? No, why are we here together? <laughs> Same thing now. We're in the pool. Now, you won't even, you know, you may not even notice it. 
But I might just tell you, oh yeah, they just peed. Then I said, you just peed? Yeah, I just peed. <laughs> this is gross. Why is everybody around me peeing? But this is the point. Think about yourself walking through, through the culture in which you walk right now. How many people around you are peeing? How many influences are you receiving that you won't even notice it unless somebody points it out to you? Think about where you get your influences from. So we're talking about having a character or a personality. And there are only two ways to remain pure, or to be pure. One is to remain pure, to, be, to remain uninfluenced, be in the water and never have any pee at all. The second way of being purified is to purge the influence. In other words, as soon as you recognize that it's in you and that it's having an effect, then you can, you know, you have to figure out a way to, to purge it. That can go back to childhood trauma. At what point can you look back on your early childhood trauma and realize, I got peed on a lot when I was a kid. I'm going to wash this off. And then you have to figure out how to, to, to do all that, of course. Um, but you have to first off recognize that it's even happening. Then you have to recognize that, it's, it's, um, that it can be fixed. And that goes along with these two things up here. And, those, and by the way, those are some really hard things. So first off, recognize that you're even being influenced. Because, I mean, we walk through the world and what do we think we can listen to and not be influenced by? Think about, I'd like to see your playlist. It's just like if I ever have a, a parent complain about the way I talk in class. One of the first questions I want to do, I want to ask is, can I see your playlist? Can I see what you're playing at home? Can I see how many books you have at home? Can I see how many televisions you have at home? Can I see how much internet access you give your kids? Can I see how much you're involved in their lives? Can I see all of that before I tell you that I do use the F word from time to time in class? But that's the one thing that's going to push you over, not everything else. I'd love to see your playlist. I'd love to see what, what words are being used on there, such that, bless you, such that we have these, these pearl-clutching virgin ears. I can't hear, you know, these words. And by the way, those are just words. I'd like to hear what ideas you're encountering in a day, in, you know, day to day. And if you really start to think about how much influence you're receiving, you're going to realize that there are a lot of people around you peeing in this pool. There's a lot of them out there, man. Think about where you get your influences from. Music, obviously. And now, do you really, really, really think that you can listen to the things that you're listening to and not be affected by them. By the way, I'm, when I say that, I, I'm curious to know where all of our minds go. I wonder if all of our minds go towards the really negative music that we listen to. Yeah, I can listen to that. It doesn't bother. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't affect me. I wonder how many of us turn to the positive music that we listen to. Oh, Scott, I was talking about the positive stuff. Yeah, the positive music. That's true. I can't listen to a lot of it without it affecting me. Can you? Which, which, which of those two places does your mind go? The negative influences or the positive influences? Because you're going to find that we very rarely ever feel the need to defend the positive influences. But man, we're on top of defending those negative influences, but let's call it what it is. I just want to. I just want to. I like the beat on this. I just want to. It's like I'll talk about um, listening to like, like music, for example, with really negative, really negative influences. And we'll say, well, no, no, I don't listen to it for the lyrics. I listen to it for the beat. Okay. Let me know. I can give you some really good Christian hip-hop. I can give you some really good Islamic hip-hop. I know some really good artists. Oh, but that's, that's weird, isn't it? Why is it weird? It's just about the beat, right? It's not about the lyrics. It's just about the beat. We, come on, man. We know it's not about the beat. We know that it's about the words, too. We know that it's about the lyrics. We know it's about a lot of parts of it. But I guess the question is, how, how, much, how much can you love the beat, even if it's destroying your character? How much more can you love the beat than you love yourself? How much of it can you take in? Anybody in here ever see Pinocchio? Yes. Which one? Yeah. Uh, the first one. Oh. Maybe you've seen Pinocchio before. Okay. I'm not, there's a, a new one on Netflix. It's like a claymation one. That's really damn good. You should see that one. But if you remember the story from, from Pinocchio, they get kidnapped, and they, and actually, they don't even get kidnapped. They go willingly to a place called Pleasure Island. Yeah. yeah. And what's Pleasure Island missing, by the way? Anybody know? Anybody remember? Adults. Adults. And specifically, which adults? Parents. Yeah. And specifically, which parent? Dad. Yeah, mothers. Yeah. Mothers. mothers is a big part of it. This is, the, this, this is the, the taming influence of parents on kids. You take kids. Leave them to their own desires, let them listen to whatever they want to listen to, let them <clears throat> eat whatever they want to eat, do whatever they want to do. And what happens to little boys when you leave them without parental influences? What do they become? 
donkeys. Donkey, donkey, donkey. jackasses. <laughs> and you see it. I mean, I, I see it, um, obviously, because I work with, with, with little kids in the, in the, at the gym. You see it. I, there's a judo class that goes on before my class, and then there's the jujitsu class. And usually there's about three to five minutes between the two classes. So I go over, I don't say anything to them. I just go over, I set a timer, and then the timer just starts. And then they know how much time they have. And these kids go wild, man. They're like picking up like, like uh, um, kick shields and just like smashing each other with them. <laughs> Some people just be standing there watching all the chaos. And I watch him, I go, uh, must be a new guy. Because he's not watching his back. <laughs> and as he's just standing there just watching all the chaos, some little kid right behind him grabs his ankles and then just lift him up so he goes face first on the mat. <laughs> and then they look at me and I always ask him, first day, huh, new kid? <laughs> Because this is how they behave when, they, when, when, you know, when, there's, when there's a bit of freedom that, that's allowed in there. Now, we get better as we get older, right? Uh, come watch my seniors sometimes. Because as you become a senior, you get more and more hands-off. Teachers kind of let you to your own devices now. They don't, they're on top of you as much for homework. They're on top of you so much for, for being on time. And what happens is, is that those people who otherwise might be well-behaved are now going off and they're going a completely different route. Why? Because there's no one standing above them telling them what they must do. They're allowed to their own devices. Now you can see which influence is really stuck. It's like, oh heck, it's like in this class, why are 80% of you failing? There's a reason for it. I don't stand above you. Come on, get your work done. Put that away. You can do this. I believe in you. I'm going to do that sometime. When you guys come in, I'm going to start talking like that. How are you all today? Oh Hey, figures up. Show me. Uh, one to five. How are you feeling? Oh, you got you feeling. Oh, we got a two over here. Okay, it's really like a very aggressive two he's got going on there. Oh, okay. How can we? Oh, okay. How can we fix that? All right. Circle up. Sharing time. Exactly. <laughs> two in the middle. Bite it out. The rest of us cheer. All right. Let's go. Um, two people enter. One person leaves. <laughs> Now again, I know some of you dig that. Some of you will dig that. But here's the thing. If all of that stuff worked, if, if, if having teachers stand above you and force you to work, if sending emails home, if calling home, if all that stuff really worked, and I mean like, not worked in the short term in terms of this class, but worked in the long term in terms of developing your personality, isn't that what you've had your whole life? Isn't that what most of your teachers are? If that worked, I wouldn't need to do it in here because you'd already be doing those things, because you'd already be influenced by all of your other classes leading up to this point. But that tells you something. You're not influenced necessarily by those positive things. We're, we're influenced way more, way more by the negative things. And we might think like, oh, it's because we need to, to, to fit in. I'm gonna let that sink in for just a second. We're way more influenced by the negative things than the positive things. Why? Because we wanna fit in. So what kind of a world are you trying to fit into? Think about that. Think about that. When we talk about popular music, music that's popular, pop music, why are the themes so debaucherous? Why are the themes what they are? Why aren't there very positive messages? What's missing? Why is it that we're trying so hard to fit into a negative culture that, that really brings out the worst elements of us. Is there anything really that you're listening to? By the way, there might be, and I hope there is. I'm just asking this as a general question. Is there really stuff that you're listening to, even passively, that's pushing you in a positive direction? And even then, I'm thinking of like, um, you're thinking of like uh, J. Cole, Love Yours. You guys know the song? No? Uh, yeah, what's that? It's too bad. Yeah, it's too bad. It's a great song. It's a great song. I'm trying to think of the, the very last part of, the, of, the, of it. He says, there's always going to be a house that's bigger than the one you got. There's always going to be uh, someone with, cl with clothes that are fresher than the, runs you, uh, than the ones you rock. Sorry. There's always going to be somebody with clothes that are fresher than the ones you rock. And then this next line, there's always going to be a bitch that's better out there on the tour. But you're never going to be happy until you love yours. And you can hear that and go, yeah. Did you miss the fact that you just called women bitches? <laughs> And that we accept this as a positive part of our culture. We just go, yeah. Well, I mean, he's not talking about, I mean, it's very specific. Why do we have to make all these excuses for it? Why can't we just accept it? The, he said what he said. And the overall thing there is positive, sure. But look at how it's tainted with just enough piss to now make it like, oh, man, couldn't it have been delivered in a better way? 
Couldn't it have been delivered in, 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 in a better spirit? Yeah, I suppose so. It's a great song. It's a great message. Essentially, what he's saying is love the things that you've got. Doesn't mean you shouldn't want more, but love what you do have. But then it's tainted by the little, bless you, it's tainted by these little things that are in there. Why can't we just have something positive? Why does that be, you know, adulterated with this ugliness? Now, I'm just talking here at the last 10 minutes or so about music. Think about everything else that's in our, that's, that's around us now. The people that are around us, who, by the way, are also, oh, sorry, I'll get to the people at the end. Now, think about the movies that we, that we watch and, and the music that we listen, I'm sorry, the, the, the videos that we watch, the algorithms that point very specific things towards us on TikTok, on YouTube. I mean, every, look at your feed sometimes. See what you're being fed. And then ask yourself, why am I being fed all this stuff? It's like if you're watching YouTube and you're getting a whole bunch of commercials. Ask yourself, why is that commercial being targeted towards me? What is it in my viewing habits that an algorithm has, is telling me these are the best videos for me to watch? These are the best advertisements for me to receive? What do they think about you? Or better yet, what do they now know about you? Now, you're also now influenced by a whole bunch of other people around you, 8 billion people in the world, although I guess we should focus on the ones most closely around us, the 350 million people around here, that are also being influenced by all of these things and are now influencing into your life. It's just this big pond, man. You might think, like, yeah, but it's a big pond. Yeah, but there's a lot of people in there peeing, man. And you're constantly being hit with all of these influences. So in terms of remaining uninfluenced, good luck. Not going to happen. The only thing you can do here is to separate yourself. Try this the same. To allow yourself to be alone. Because you cannot be around other people and not be influenced. It's not possible. Going back to something AJ said towards the beginning, we're looking at, like when you're alone and you're thinking about things. Are you though? And I really mean that. Are we thinking about things? Or are we putting something in our ears, more influence that we're feeding ourselves to stop us from thinking of when we're by ourselves? And I get it. It's such a hard thing, man, because it's difficult to sit there and, and not listen to things. I mean, last night I was over at, um, I was over at the gym and I was sitting in the sauna and I, I took my AirPods in with me because someone told me, you know, because I read about it, they said, oh, your AirPods will, might get destroyed by the heat. And a friend of mine was saying, no, I go in there all the time with them. I'm like, oh, okay, why? Because I don't know, man, do you want to sit there for 15 minutes with your own thoughts? And um, I choose to. I choose to go in there. I, I have them in and I'm listening to something. I take them out and then sit there and listen for a while. I'm sorry, I sit there and think for a while. But really think about how much of your, of your time is really taken up with your own thoughts. How much of it is taken up by the influence that you pour into yourself. And what those influences are, man, it's a lot. And it's constant. And it's a torrent. So if you have a choice to, to, to feed yourself with positive influences or negative influences, you know? if you're listening to something on your phone, then that means you have access to a lot of positive things. Books on... Uh, um, Audiobooks, uh, pod podcasts that talk about how to build yourself up, make yourself better. You know, and you also have entertainment. And unfortunately, the modes of entertainment that we choose a lot of times are exactly the things that lead to our destruction. We have to be careful with that. That the ways in which we choose to entertain ourselves, because if you're going to be entertained, maybe make them things that are positive. Because the things that we choose to entertain ourselves with, especially since... I mean, let's face it, really look at your daily life, it'd be worth considering. How much of your daily life is taken up with, with entertainment? It's a lot, dude. Even like when some of you, when you're supposed to be in classes, you still have AirPods in your ears. You're, entertaining, you're being entertained for that hour and a half, two hours that you're in a class. I mean, think about how much of your life is really geared towards entertainment and how much of your life is geared towards building yourself up and becoming better. And as you become an adult, man, you will be well entertained. Well entertained. But are you going to be better for it? I don't know. You know. I don't know. And that's a life that you have to live. It's not a life I have to live. So that's a choice that you're going to have to make. Whether you're going to love yours. <laughs> Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticism, critiques. Happy Tuesday. Yep. Um, three more after this. I know that fool. Sergio.